Some of our remailed operators have a long history with molten metal. My great grandfather retired out of remail. My grandpa retired out of the salt in, and my dad also retired out of remail. My grandfather was hotline foreman, and my dad and all his brothers were remail employees. The old stories don't all have happy endings. I mean, I've heard horrible scenario. horror stories of aluminum blowing up in people's faces and going up their nose and having to pull out their name solidified in aluminum and it looks like their sinus cavity or people getting it going down their throat and then there's throat swells. Well then I've heard stories from my father and grandfather that they'd have to pull them out and stick sticks down their throat to keep them from swelling shut to keep them alive. And I can't even count probably probably a dozen or more. You know, yeah, it's just one of those things where you just see it back then. You just, and it, it usually it used to have a, a, at least a blow up once a week back when I first started. I mean, there was one blow up on, on DC 6 that I always remember the guy had a sweatshirt on. By the time we got to him, his meat from his arm was just hanging, you know, and it, it, it lots and lots of skin grafts. He went through a lot of pain and suffering on that. So, I mean, I just, like I said, there's so, been so, was so many of them. I, couldn't even tell you how. The saying goes that if we fail to learn from history, we're destined to repeat it. I was standing maybe on top of the hill pan itself on the grate that separates the hill pan from where we work. And I was standing on it and I kind of was turned to my left side with my right side facing it. And as I broke it, I'm holding the pendulum for the crane to lift up the trough. And right when metal started filling up in there, it just mm. it just blew on us. And I'm, I mean, it was my face was over the top of it, and Jeremy was luckily looking at it. Yeah, looking right at it, and he got hit from the side. I remember staring down at it and watching it fill up, and then just hearing an explosion, filling it hit me and going, oh crap, and I remember, that's all I remember going, oh crap, feeling it hit me, blast me backwards, and then I remember coming up out of the pit, screaming and ripping all my gear off. But I don't really remember anything in between. <laughs> Probably two, three hundred pounds of, of metal just got thrown everywhere. Oh, very far. Uh -huh. It hit the ceiling. It hit the ceiling, so... F and then about a probably a 50, 75 foot circle radius, it sprayed out. It covered our whole pit and there's there's metal in places you didn't think there, there should be metal. Yeah, it looked like it had snowed almost, yeah. just a silver snow yeah. on the floor. So, you know, I wanted to make sure he was all right. And, and I, I, from the sound of it, it didn't sound like he was. And then, you know, I didn't know if I was all right, you know, cause it's that metal, I'm, I'm wearing all of my gear and when it's raining on you, the impact and the heat still hurts. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's peppering you everywhere, and it's... It's like getting hailed. We're running yeah. out in a hailstorm, just yeah. hot. Not hot hailstorm. Yeah. A couple minor burns. Yeah. Not, not bad, though. Where at? I had two on my arm, on my forearm. No scars. They left marks the night of, but that was about it. Yeah. I was lucky. Nothing for me. Yeah. I truly believe that if we weren't wearing our face shields, that it would have been one of us down there like that. Yeah. Ooh, if I if my face shield would have been up, um, I'd probably still be getting skin grafts on my face. It was. Cause I believe you had yours up to talk back. Wow. Because I mean, you it, when you have that face shield down, you just can't hear anybody, and it's pretty loud out in the mill. So, I mean, we both had our face shields up talking to each other, then right back down, just I don't know if it's a habit or, or what, but it, just the timing was, was good. They could either be maimed or it was bad enough. They could have been killed if they hadn't been wearing PPE. This goes to prove it's, it's, it's life-saving or, or badly burned for the rest of their name for the rest of their lives. The PPE is for their protection. It works. We have proof that it does work. The question for today is, what have we learned along the way that will protect us? No matter how good you think you are, no matter how good you think your training is, 
you can get better. I've come to believe that even when I think we're doing well, we're doing excellent, we can always get better and something can always happen. Even when you're following the rules, things can happen. I personally, I'm going to make sure everything's hot. You know, I learned not to assume anything anymore that mm -hmm. everything's ready to go and make sure, double check it for myself because I got family and I want to go back home to them every night. Probably do all my own setup yeah. as far as on a fresh startup. You know, I'll tear it down, you know, if it takes a couple hours. A little more work. I'll, I'll tear it down and do the work. And You have to know the condition of all of your equipment at Person. a startup. Yes, personally, not something somebody told you. It's not a pass down from the previous shift. You have to verify. Verification, verification. You can't say it enough. But not just providing the PPE, but getting people to use it. Even as recent as two years ago, I would say 25% of the casting employees uh, complied with the PPE policy. When it comes to compliance to, the, to any of the policies regarding safety, uh, especially molten metal safety, we have to do what we have to do to make, to get compliance. I went through lots of coaching, mentoring, persuading, begging. I, I did it all to try to get guys to comply. And some, you know, at some point you even have to go the route of discipline and un uncomfortable things like that. But you have to do what you have to do to get there. It took a good probably year to get these guys saying, hey, we got to wear this, you know. There's a time and a place for everything when it comes to uh, trying to get that compliance. Don't be afraid to do the, the uncomfortable part because in the end, you're going to save somebody's life. All drain and skim pans and sound molds are inspected for the presence of moisture and rust prior to each use. Drain pans, sound molds are preheated to greater than 250 degrees Fahrenheit if the pan mold falls below 250 degrees Fahrenheit during normal and continuous operations. Outages, extended casting unit downtime, weekend shutdowns, or even a skip shift require special evaluation and pan treatment, heating or oiling, prior to casting operations being restarted. If preheating is not possible, then the drain pan Sow mold is oiled with mineral oil or similar. It must be emphasized during training that materials used as a separating agent for drain pans or sow molds do not provide protection against explosions. Also, explosions are more probable if the coatings are not dried thoroughly or if they become contaminated with moisture after drying because the moisture cannot be removed well with air drying. A skim pan or drain pan with a crack greater than 1 8 inch wide must be taken out of service for repair or scrapping. Floor sweepings, trash, debris are not deposited in any drain pan or sow mold that is intended or staged to accept molten aluminum. Refer to the Corporate Molten Metal Safety Standard for further details. And... Wear your PPE. Yeah, it's the last, mean, last line of defense and you, you hope you never have to use it. It may be hot and may be sweaty, but yeah. it's a lot better than going to the hospital with burns. Yeah. I mean, when you do get blasted, it, it does it does its job. You don't have time to react. It happens so quick. I mean, that explosion mm -hmm. literally hit us within, you know, I can't even, it's so quick that there wouldn't be no time to even flick your head to flip that face shield down or anything. Mm -hmm. I think the guys on the floor happily were prepared for it. If we fail to learn from the past, or destined to repeat it. There's always somebody that thinks they know better than you, or maybe they just think that that uh, it had never happened to them. And I think Jeremy and Danny can attest to the fact that it will happen to you. It's just a matter of when.